we have already learned that every sentence can be divided into two parts the subject and the predicate so if we take an example of a sentence a ball rolls on the ground here a ball is the subject whereas rolls on the ground is the predicate now what is a subject subject tells us who or what is performing the verb so in this case a ball is performing the verb what is the verb rolls a subject can be a noun or a pronoun or a group of words acting as a noun now in this case what do we have as the subject a noun and an article which is modifying the noun so a ball is the subject in this case now what is the predicate a predicate tells us about the subject so here the predicate rolls on the ground is telling us about the ball so what is the ball performing the ball rolls on the ground now it should be noted that the predicate always contains the verb so see here rolls is the verb and rolls is a part of the predicate so an essential part of the predicate is the verb the children are playing happily now in this sentence what is the verb are playing now who are playing happily the children so the subject of the sentence is the children and what do we see it comes before the verb not only that it is also at the beginning of the sentence so the subject of a sentence usually comes at the beginning before the verb they rushed to catch the train now rushed is the verb in this case and what is the subject they so in this case our subject is a pronoun and the verb comes after the subject so one of the positions in which the subject can be present is at the beginning of a sentence before the verb now look at this example who gave you this ring now this is a question in this case gave is the verb and who gave you this ring so who this word who itself is the subject in this case and we see that who is right at the beginning of the sentence and it is followed by the verb so in most cases the subject is placed at the beginning of a sentence so in all these examples that we have seen the subject is present at the beginning of a sentence and in each of these cases it has come before the verb the subject of a sentence may sometimes come in the middle so if i take this example in the morning i usually have bread and butter now what is the verb in this sentence in this sentence the verb is have and who is performing this action of having bread and butter it is the pronoun i so here i is the subject of the sentence but is it at the beginning of a sentence no in this case our sentence begins with in the morning so the subject is at the middle of the sentence so we see the subject of a sentence may sometimes come in the middle of the sentence as in this case after a long day's work robinson was tired here was is the verb and robinson is the subject of the sentence so once again what do we see that the subject is positioned in the middle of the sentence so in this case what do we see after a long day's work a part of the predicate comes at the beginning of the sentence which is followed by the subject and then comes the verb and the rest of the sentence so here as well we see that our subject is in the middle now look at this sentence did the train arrive in time now this is a question and what is the verb in this sentence did arrive and where is the subject the subject 
the train is placed between did and arrive. So these are the two parts of the verb and the subject is placed between the two parts of the verb. So in this case as well we see the subject is placed in the middle not at the beginning of the sentence. How cold the weather is. Now in this sentence we see that it is showing an exclamation or it is expressing a strong feeling. Now let us first identify the verb in this case. It is the word is. Now what is being referred to over here? What is how cold? The weather. So the subject here is the weather. Now if you notice it comes before the verb but it is in the middle of the sentence. So a part of the sentence comes before it and the verb is following the subject. So here too the subject is in the middle. Now let us look at this sentence. Here comes the bus. What is the verb in this sentence? Comes. And what is the subject? Well, the subject is the bus. What comes? The bus. So bus is our subject. But you see that in this case the subject is placed neither at the beginning nor in the middle. It is placed right at the end of the sentence. So the subject of a sentence may sometimes come at the end as in this case. Across the river runs a long bridge. Now here runs is the verb. So what runs across the river? A long bridge. So this part a long bridge is our subject and it is placed at the end. So here we could have said a long bridge runs across the river. Even that is a correct way of saying in that case the subject would have come at the beginning. But here we have constructed it in a little different way. So our sentence has become across the river runs a long bridge. So often in storybooks or in literature you will see sentences like this where the subject comes at the end and the verb comes before the subject. Where is my wallet? Now this is a question. And here what is the verb? Is. So where is my wallet? So what is the subject in this case that is performing this verb is? It is my wallet. So my wallet is the subject of the sentence. Here too what do we see? The subject is placed right at the end. Have your breakfast in time. Now look at this particular sentence. What is the verb here? Have. Now who have your breakfast in time? So who is performing this action? That is not there. Do we get an answer of that in the sentence? No. So this is a special type of sentence. So sentences expressing commands do not have the subject present in them. So they are implied but they are actually absent. So here we see the subject is left out. So the sentence actually is you have your breakfast in time. But this you part is not given in the sentence. So whenever we are giving commands, we usually do not mention the subject. We simply say have your breakfast in time. But this subject you is implied. So often you will see in sentences like this, the subject is left out. But that does not mean that the sentence is without a subject. So you need to be very careful when you come across sentences like this. Don't get confused. Read the sentence and if you think that it is a command, you will understand that the subject is left out. But definitely there is an implied subject as in you in this case. Now can you identify the subject of the sentence given below? What is the sentence? 
wash your hands properly so what should be the subject in this case well first of all let us identify the verb in this case so what is the verb wash now if we question it with who or what so now given that this is the verb we need to find out who or what is performing this verb because we know that the subject tells us who or what is performing a verb now in this case who is performing this verb wash your hands properly well we actually don't have an answer in this sentence now if you look at this sentence carefully you will see that this is once again a command or an advice so as we have learned in such cases the subject is often left out so the subject is left out now what is that left out part you so now if you read you wash your hands properly we get an answer so what is the subject it is you and this part is implied but the subject is left out in the given sentence so in such cases we need to write the subject and what is this bracket for this bracket shows that we have added this this part is originally not a part of the sentence so what did we learn today we have learned about the different positions of a subject so what have we seen we have seen that in most sentences the subject comes first so at the beginning of the sentence but at times the subject may also be placed in the middle or at the end of a sentence so a subject can take different positions in the sentence though in most cases we have it at the beginning but it is also possible to find it at the middle or at the end of a sentence so when we read a sentence first we need to identify the verb and then see who or what is performing that verb that will help us to find out the subject don't forget to subscribe to our channel you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get all learning resources as per icsc cbsc ib cambridge or any other curriculum over 5000 amazing lectures across math science english and social science our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our i dictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions get instant answers and detailed solutions be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests performance analysis along with actionable feedback personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.